welcome you all to the five day workshop on the topic of research methodology and techniques today is the third day of our workshop and uh, the workshop today's workshop will also be of one hour including the question answers round uh, it is our request to all the participants to kindly mute their mics and if you have some queries or questions you may post it in the comment box in the, if you are on the youtube and you can post it on the chat box if you are on zoom Uh, and also, this is to inform you that a feedback form will be provided in the chat box at the end of the session, and you are requested to kindly fill the form to ensure your attendance. Uh, now, I I take this opportunity to invite a respected professor, Dr. Yuval Sir, uh, to to give his views on the topic. Thank you, Mr. Akhilesh Durejaji. Durej uh today on the third day of five days national workshop on research methodology and techniques i wholeheartedly welcome the learned speaker uh, Pro uh, professor ashish kumar shivastav sahab from uh, lucknow university today is a very uh, in the last two days we have seen that from first day professor dr t uh, t s n shastri sahab has given you the introduction and and has narrated about the uh, nature of research methodology yesterday madam has uh, madam gupta professor gupta has in a very lucid manner discussed with you the concept of hypothesis and types of research today we have got a very learned a very important and learned uh, uh, important aspect of it which we always face trouble in whenever we go for writing an article whenever we are going for uh, uh, our phd thesis or any such thing that is how to make a reference and on that topic we have got a very learned person our professor mr ashish kumar shivastav who will who he will be discussing about this aspect so with this now i request the academic coordinator madam monica kharola of ikpai law university ikpai law school ikpai university dehradun to please give a brief introduction of our keynote and speaker of the day mr to that is mr ashish dr ashish kumar ji madam monica kharola thank you sir uh i am pleased to introduce to all the participants the speaker for today's uh, lecture dr ashish kumar shrivastav who is the assistant professor faculty of law university of lucknow he graduated from law school banaras hindu university varanasi with gold medal he was awarded junior research fellowship by ugc he started his academic career at national law university jodhpur he has 10 years of teaching experience at undergraduate and postgraduate law program he has co-authored a book on property law laws published by lexus nexus he has authored a book on partnership published by thomson reuters he has also prepared modules for epg patshala program of ministry of human resource development on company law he has delivered lectures at hrdc ugc lucknow hal indian railway institute of transport management he did his phd on corporate insolvency he has several publications to his credit in reputed publications such as icps air 
NLS Bangalore, National Law University, New Delhi. We welcome you, Dr. Ashish, to this lecture series on research methodology and techniques. Kindly start the lecture. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for such a nice introduction. I am very much obliged Great. to Lai School, Ikfai University. I am very much obliged, Professor Yugal Kishore, for such a nice introduction. Speaking on an issue of citation is a very intriguing issue in legal research, especially both to qualitative and quantitative research methodology sections. The topic which was assigned by the coordinator to me was using Blue Book and Ascola for citation. The moment we say about citation, then a very negative narrative comes to our mind. Because in my school days, when I was at Lai School BHU, then citation basically was used for searching out more materials. What we used to do, we went to the libraries. Our library was very rich. We had two libraries, departmental library and the central library. And that was the richest library in the North region. I will say in the Asian region because the Sayaji Rao Gaikwar library, I've never seen such a huge library. I've been to all life schools in India. But that kind of a library which I went to, the most problematic issue to a law student was how to search a material. And then back then there was no OPAC, online public access catalog. So searching any material on a subject of interest was basically found in the bibliography of the dissertation work or thesis work, which were found in the libraries. But things now have changed. Uh, I have an exposure of 15 years in law stream. And in this 15 year, there has been a sea change, especially to citation. And why this change came into being, because if you see the copyright regime that was before trips and after trips, that has changed dramatically. Because trips, if you see, the trips basically makes more changes to patent. And it impacts to the industrial properties more, not to the copyright. Because I, I know that this gathering which is here might be knowing about the copyright as well as the industrial property, which we, which are the two branches of the IPs. And TRIPS basically impacts the industrial property more, not the copyright. But the copyright specifically has gained momentum. And an issue of plagiarism that came into being by the UGC regulation in academic writing, basically. So we used to start to go to the library, to the dissertation section, or to the bibliography section of the dissertations and thesis to find more and more material on a subject matter. But now, the whole concept is upside down, because you have to find out materials of your interest. And then you have to ideate or conceptualize a concept or idea, and you have to write upon or ponder upon the issue in an analytical or critical manner, and then quote the authorities in the form of citation or in the form of reference in your work. I very clearly remember of the law school professors they used to tell me that you can judge and work to be authentic only when you find the references to be very authentic in the work quoted. So in my student days, as well as in my academic writing and reading, 
what we do we take only authentic works where the authentic references and authentic quotations have been made out that is one thing second thing is now this is not a ethical requirement rather this is a legal requirement because there will be an issue of copyright infringement as well as the plagiarism issue of the ugc regulation because your thesis work your dissertation or your academic writings which you are doing for the purpose of promotions there can be consequences of it which will be obviously penal in terms of promotions or in terms of incremental benefit that you will not be availing because if your work is more than 10% plagiarized which is check, checked upon the anti plagiarism software like turnitin or rootkund then there will be negative impact of it so these are two very important aspect that more and more research is to be done for that a very refined citation is required more and more material is to be found on a particular literature or in a particular subject that's why citation helps you a lot because in a library when you go or enter and if the library is huge and physical maybe even if it is digital also then if you are ready references available like catalogs are there or you know the book name you know the writer's name you know the page and reference number then it will be very easy to sort out the literature because otherwise sorting out literature in a physical as well as digital library is a huge problem for any particular researcher of a particular stream so citation helps you a lot but at the same time when you see so many citation guides available around for citing so many authorities you are really confused because the blue book comes from america and ascola comes from the britain so very obviously you have two methods of citations available to you one is american the other is the british model ascola indian citation guides have been on a very nascent stage because way back there were blue books of the institutions like banaras law school had its own blue book ili is still now has its own blue book cs style they have on their website you can download it meanwhile around 2015 i found something coming up like silk standard indian legal citation but that could not gain the momentum so it became disappeared in a while ascola became very popular because ascola is a very brief guide and nowadays most of the times people are just citing ascola but at the same time if you are writing for the american literary and academic work then blue book becomes the most important citation guide then there are other citation guides like apa american psychological association guide then chicago manual which is called maroon book then aba citation guide american bar association guides are there so once you go through these citation guides then you come to know that citation is a very tricky issue and citation is also a legal issue as well as ethical issue in academic writing in pleadings which you are making before the judicial or quasi judicial forums so in this brief session i will just unfold certain basic things about the citation now prachi please move to the second slide so once you go to the libraries you find so many materials available on your subject like there are case laws there are official reports then there is case books legal periodicals monographs government publications are also there there are foreign legal materials there are digest encyclopedias so once you go into the library then a rich library and especially a law library is a sine qua non for a law school that's why at the 
permission level itself the bar council of india is very much concerned about the law libraries and a very robust library in a law school is like a powerhouse of the knowledge so once in you go go in a library then you find out so many literature scattered in so many documents and precedents are the most important sources of law as you know whosoever is exposed to the jurisprudence knows that there are just three basic sources of law one is precedent the other is legislation and then customs so legislation you find in the statute books and then you find commentaries on that written by sometimes academicians sometimes the lawyers then reporting is a very important tool because you know the precedents are the law of the land under article 141 most of you might be knowing it and there is official publication by the supreme court of india as well supreme court journal is published and then there are reporting done by the ecb uh, sorry eastern book company and then there are the air and the supreme court lmn act like that so there are so many reporters and all these reporting started way around 1850 so if you see the reporters like uh, harvard law review the very prominent review duke law review pennsylvania law review and if you see reporters like ilr sometimes you say air these are all dating back around 1880 and 1900 something like that so reporting starts at that point of time only and it is still on so these are the literatures which are available in a library then these literatures are to be quoted in your work you read then you conceptualize and you, then you analyze an idea and then you write it because once you write then the expressions that you make takes a form of document you might be knowing it document is an expression in any medium upon any substance that is the legal definition given in the ipc as well as indian evidence act so when you document something when you write a book when you write an article in copyright act we call it a work it can be an academic work it can be a literary work it can be a dramatic work. even your musical compositions are work your code software programs are also work in india especially so your software program is also in work because there is a coding done so whatever you express is a document and those expressions do matter in legal study and legal academic writings so citation becomes very important tool and as i told you that in ip we have two distinct branches one is copyright the other is industrial property so citation has something to do with the copyright act which came into being around 1957 and copyright act basically has two important issues one is called fair use the other is called copyright infringement and copyright is called a bundle of right you can see uh, please note down the sections and please see once at least even if you are a law student you have anything to do with the ipr even if you have nothing to do with the intellectual property please see two sections section 14 and section 52 of the copyright act is very important for any researcher even a general researcher who is writing and reading even for his own sake he has nothing to do with the reading writing and reproducing so he is not into the business of publication or reproduction but even then in current scenario he must know how section 14 and 15 14 and 52 goes now prachi come to the third slide so as i was telling you that now there are two issues which are very important in copyright you create a work and those people who are exposed to the copyright act they might be knowing that expressions do matter whatever you express 
even if it is lacking the quality so quality is not a criteria at all for copyright protection you might be knowing it that quality has nothing to do with the copyright protection and whole ip law has a very unique situation because you get intellectual property protection only when you are registered so for seeking any benefit or any remedy in the indian copyright act your copyright must be registered nevertheless you must also know that even if your copyright is not registered it is a unregistered copyright then also you get common law remedy for that so putting a c in a circle makes your work protected even without getting an ip registration from indian ip office be clear about it so you create something you write something in a page you make a work quality of the work is immaterial for ip protection but expression qualifies for the ip protection only thing required is that it must be novel so novelty is a criteria so its newness is a criteria and novelty is a criteria so novelty is criteria but quality is not a criteria be clear about it and expression is a criteria so you have to express your idea your concept in a particular format it can be anything from a software program to a diary and if you see these three cases which i have quoted in the slide rg anand versus dilak films is a landmark case watershed judgment on the copyright act eastern book company versus db modak is a very important judgment and the very recent one the delhi photocopier case is about section 52 using the academic writing for non commercial so single non commercial use is not a copyright violation it's a fair use so called in the international ip protection i told you that the whole purpose of copyright protection is to incentivize the expressions which are being made by the authors in the form of royalty they will be making from the work they have made from the publication houses as well as from the readers in a small section or portion that is called the economic aspects of the copyright and i have quoted in the first line about citation wars why this citation war is going on in the world because i told you that the american and the britishers are having two citation styles totally distinct from each other ascola is a very conservative kind of style and blue book is a very pragmatic kind of style but blue book is very complex runs into hundreds of pages and ascola is a small guide running into 70 pages so the simplicity is the uniqueness of the ascola but the complexity of the blue book is the uniqueness and there are references from the american supreme court as well as the indian supreme court that if your pleadings are not as per the gold standard so called the gold standard is obviously if you have not quoted your pleadings as per blue book then your pleadings might get rejected and a very simple example is oxford comma dispute case wherein certain consigner who were the shipper shipper of the certain dairy product they litigated a company on a particular para which you will be seeing in the next slide you can see it on your own and you can just see that url which i have given that what this comma dispute was meaning thereby if you are missing a comma it can cost you millions i am not going into that kind of a very 
detailed approach of citation but when you are into the drafting of the legislative provisions because it might be that all the participants of this gathering might at one point of time get a first hand experience of drafting some legislative text or material for some legislative houses so there you have to keep in mind even the punctuation marks can cost to millions and trillions of money and this punctuation is a very much part of citation and referencing methodology eastern book company case and rg anand rg anand just in one line says that copyright protects the idea sorry copyright protects the expression it does not protect the idea so idea plot and themes now such are not protected in indian copyright regime eastern book company case says that the cases which are decided by the supreme court or high court are not subject matter of copyright but the head notes which are prepared upon those cases are subject matter of copyright and delhi photocopier case you might be knowing that the case packs are course packs which were sold by the rameswar photocopy in the mall road premise of the delhi law school wherein they were comprising certain articles published in the oxford journals and the other reputed journals and which were sold as a course pack to the students in a photocopy mode that was basically litigated as copyright infringement case but delhi high court said that this is a fair academic use so fair use is a very unique idea tachi go to the next slide i told you this case please go through this case read it because there is no comma put on the packing after packing that's why that 5 million us dollar case was filed against the okhes dairy and not putting the comma can cost so much is an important take home for you in this session please come to the next slide which is the basis of this whole argument this is a very important slide and if you go into the last line why you need to mention the source and name of the author and what is the amount of fair use which you can do if you see the fair use concept it is really very 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 much uh, i will say very complex idea of fair use because in my days what we used to do we went to in the library we got four five literatures and books and materials and the articles on a particular subject and then we copied the literature verbatim two lines from this book two lines from that book and we quoted the resources as well and there was no issue of the copyright infringement and there was no issue of plagiarism but right now most of the literature are being picked upon from the web sources and then there are softwares like turnitin and urkun they will be scanning millions and trillions of pages within few minutes and they will be submitting you a report wherein whatever literature you have taken were babies were betting from the online material will be shown as plagiarized so right now the whole idea is that you read you digest and you reproduce in your own language and you also code the sources from where you have read it so it becomes quite critical and complex in writing as well because the earlier whole idea was ccp cut copy and paste you just take the material and you just code the source that's enough but right now the academic writings are not into that form you have to read you have to digest you have to conceptualize and there are enough software materials for you because you see there can be a writing where two people can write together like there are software a google doc is one software suppose there is yugal sir writing on a particular topic and he wants me to write on a particular topic 
so we can being on a very different location right on one particular issue with the help of google doc but what is required from us is that whatever we are writing the particular lines must be ours and if you are quoting verbatim verbatim you have to put in double inverted comma and you have to just quote the source otherwise it will be shown as plagiarized material in the anti plagiarism software like uh the turnity in our the urkund let me tell you urkund and turnity is a very limited software because there can be settings made into you in in the urkund and turnity wherein you can decrease the amount of similarity index so if you want to exclude the bibliography if you want to exclude the uh source line if you want to exclude the footnotes or if you want to exclude certain uh particular words then you can make those exclusions and those exclusions will be taken care of while scanning the page for plagiarism so i, I always say that this is a very tricky so and if you go to the uh the the plagiarism guideline of the ugc that says the ultimate authority on the plagiarism is of the committee which is formed by the academic institution i don't know about icfi but most of the indian institutions have not yet formed the plagiarism committee because plagiarism committee which is formed has the ultimate say to decide about the similarity index as well as the plagiarized copy of a particular literature or particular academic writing of a particular teacher so that's a very difficult situation altogether i'm not going into it uh, the plagiarism is an issue of ethics but the copyright infringement is an issue of legal parlance and you will be litigated in a court and the court which will be litigating you will be asking for so much amount from you that's why these uh, prachi go to the next one the 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 third principle which is go to the next one prachi the economic aspects of the citation is very important because see if you have to cite according to the blue book then obviously blue book is going to get money out of it and if you don't cite they are going to litigate you in a copyright infringement case anybody can litigate you and you might have to pay huge amount of fine to the that publication house or to that particular author which will be demanding from you so these are five pillar principles of citation access intellectual property economy standardization and transparency access is very important in our days it was the most important thing that if there is a clear citation mentioned then easily i can go to the library and i can find out the supreme court case citator and just by the citation given air 1978 supreme court 578 i can just find out which case it is talking about even if i have had the judge name if i have uh, the 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 date of the judgment so i can go to the judis website and from the judis website i can find out the literature and material intellectual property i have told you has made a sea change especially after 2010 the standard that has been created by the citation guides like blue book says that we are they have self proclaimed themselves that we are having gold standards and blue book is being published right from 1921 the recent edition has been published last june only this june only the 21st edition and buying an edition will cost you it's a very complex document to understand and they are saying they are also maintaining the transparency so come to the next one there are enough citation guides available in the market blue book was published way back in 1921 and in 1976 uh, there were self proclaimed assertion that this is the most cited or this is the most referred citation guide in the world 
and they said that we are having a gold standard in 1990 and there was rejection being is made by the supreme court us supreme court if the citation was not at par to the blue book guide then when blue book was gaining a monopoly in the citation market then maroon book which is equally very important guide better known as university of chicago manual of legal citation because that is popularly known as chicago manual of style they call it chicago manual of style so blue book and maroon book they came as a counter citation guide and citation wars started at that point of time american psychological association american bar association these guides were also there because whatever publication you want to have in american bar association journals then you have to go by by the aba citation methods awld is something which came against the blue book guide an association of legal writing directors awld guide is against the blue book citation because blue book was maintaining a monopoly it was creating a hegemony and because of that awld started its own citation guide but the most popular guide till date after blue book is ascola which came around 2012 fourth edition 2012 is running right now and it became the most popular because of its simplicity and as i told you that standard in indian legal citation it is now nowhere it has got disappeared institutional blue book was there it is still there ili has its own blue book method then there are certain referencing management tool like if you download any article from hein online then you can see in the hein online they itself quote at the first page itself how to quote a particular article in a particular style guide and there are two softwares which you can download mendeley and endnote endnote is a paid version and mendeley is a free version how mendeley works i i can explain you very simply you just download the mendeley app you create a gmail like account in and you also download mendeley plugin which will be attached to your word so once you are downloading materials from suppose jstor or maybe oxford journals or maybe from hein online and you are downloading all the literature on your desktop or on your computer or laptop and you are accessing all it through your web browser web browser will have a plugin like mendeley and that plugin will be storing all the data regarding the citation of the literature that you have downloaded from the databases and that will have a plugin in the word also so whenever you will be writing in the word and quoting that particular author it will take an automatic reference from the mendeley software from your downloads so mendeley is a very important tool you can search on your own how to use mendeley and by searching and doing you can very much make your citation easy and handy please go to the next slide like you can see in the hein online hein online is maintaining once you download a article from any database then you will be finding here how to code them in your work like you can see that there is a blue book alwd then apa chicago manual style mcgill guide mla ascola so they are keeping here a ready made reference for you you can just copy and paste in your referencing pages in the end note or maybe in the footnote which will make your work very easy but hein online is a paid version of database and jstor is not maintaining that kind of embedded guide how to cite a particular work and the next one is mendeley you have to learn mendeley mendeley is a free app to use the reference management how you have to 
use your referencing in an automated version and this is completely automated what you have to do you have to just download two plugin one plugin for your web browser and one plugin for your uh word and then you have to create a gmail like account on the desktop app of mendeley and then it will be totally automated once you are just quoting the author name maybe you are quoting madhav menon sir and you are putting the reference madhav menon so whatever article you will have downloaded and that reference is automatically stored in the mendeley that will automatically take from it come to the next one rachi please flip the slide next one i told about mendeley uh then i told about these issues that fair use is there plagiarism issue is there copyright issue is a legal issue altogether uh, plagiarism issue is a very tricky issue because in academic writing anti plagiarism committee is not formed in most of the universities and academic institutions and they have to have their own plagiarism policy and they have to decide about what will be the level of similarity index they will be allowing or disallowing in an academic writing ugc is keeping it 10% but you might be knowing that in legal writings it cannot be 10% reason being that most of the legal writings are depending upon the text of judgments and judgments upon judgments there is no copyright of one particular one author or judge or anyone because if you see uh, the eastern book company versus db modak it very clearly says that upon the judgment of the courts no one has a copyright uh, you might be seeing the pages writing that author is the judge itself the name of the judge but so far so judgment is concerned eastern book may, may, makes it very clear that upon the judgment of the court no one has a copyright so in the issue of the legal writing what i will suggest that once you go for the anti plagiarism scan make those settings in software like trinity in our urkund of exclusions like justice you have to exclude so the very common words da you have to exclude otherwise there will be similarity index very high so and and if some 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 literature has been scanned once and you are scanning it twice then the moment you will go for the second scan it will show that 100% similarity index is there so uh, the, there has to be a committee in the in the institution itself which has to decide about the plagiarism and sorry to say i haven't come across uh, finding any academic institutions who have formed any anti plagiarism committee they form it on to case to case basis if there is any complaint about any academic writing then they form it otherwise it is not addressed as an issue right now so plagiarism is a, an, an academic issue is an academic integrity issue is an ethical issue but copyright is a legal issue be be clear about it moving on next one this is very important thing why do we cite as i told you that right now there is a negativity quite dominant about citation but in my student days i i very clearly remember that we used to go in the library to find out more and more literature and more and more material in a particular citation guide or in a particular bibliography or in a particular reference so if we have to read something more so if i am seeing a secondary literature in the ipc suppose i am seeing a book of kd gaur so kd gaur will be having references of rc nigam rc nigam will be having references from uh, maybe sir hari singh or in the ipc and sir hari singh or will be having references from smith and hogan so see you are basically traveling from piece to piece article to article and then you are traveling from book to book that was the real and sheer pleasure of academic reading and writing in my days and even now the people who are diving deep into the subject once they go like i am right now researching upon the sale of goods so once i go into the subject then i go to the anger book then i hear book then i go to the maybe mulla book then i go to do finally uh, benjamin so it makes you travel from work to work and it shows that how deep your research is 
and it also makes you clear that what is the most authentic source on your particular literature so the most important thing is that you get a clarity you get a concision and you get consistency on a particular work and you just find out where the work can be located from now please move on and uh, these are the types of citation which we find and note footnote source lines and the bibliography there is a very basic change in bibliography and footnote and most of the citation guide do maintain about how to put a particular work in a footnote as well as in end note now i will be telling you about the ascola as well as the blue book so first i will take the ascola please move on to the next slide see ascola the newest edition which is the fourth edition if you see ascola and you compare the new edition with the old one what you will find that they are decreasing the number of comma so number of comma is decreased to reduce your work the number of full stop is reduced to decrease your work the number of italicizing words have been decreased to lessen your burden so ascola the fourth edition is now very handy and there are just few changes the moment you quote a work in a footnote and bibliography and these changes have been well explained in the ascola guide itself it's a 67 pages document you can just download from the google you just google it down and you will find an ascola guide guide now come to the next one because there are few sources which we have to quote time and again like books articles so you can see here how easy it is to quote a book the author name then the book name in italics and in bracket oxford university publication 2009 earlier it was very complex because you had to use colon semicolon comma place of publication edition pages as well now you have to use nothing and you can see how easy just one comma and one italic and then no comma is there no dot is there so it is just reducing your work of citation and after the mendeley and the end note it is whole automated so after the automation going into the referencing management system and if you are doing it manually even then it is very easy see see where the problem comes most of you might have encountered this problem you are submitting an article of 20 pages having maybe if you are having four references on each page so you might be having 100 references and if your references are long enough and you have submitted a particular work to a particular publication house or an academic institution which demanded your work to be in ascola but again you are going to submit maybe to an european country or to an australia or something like that and they are demanding your work to an apa or aba style or awld style then it is really very tricky issue and the people who are into the creative zone of doing the work who are called creators they find the referencing or the footnoting a very technical as well as a very repetitive and a very boring kind of work so it might happen that the author or creator will be quite disinterested and because of this change in referencing mode and modalities he might be disinterested or he may be indifferent to submit his work to a new publication house and equally i have, this is my personal experience i have four books published with good publication houses where i have seen that one book has been re uh, rejected by a big publication house for no reason because they are saying that we have enough publication in this particular segment and the rejected work has been published by a bigger publication house i have seen it personally in my case so the people who are getting indifferent 
and that indifference is coming because of that poor referencing modes and modalities which you have to do because your work was earlier in Ascola mode and now you have to go for the APA mode or Chicago manual style. That's why you are all together uh, rejecting the whole idea of submitting in a fresh and new de novo. So that is not a good thing altogether because legal fraternity might be losing a good work upon a good subject. So my humble submission is that you can go for the automated reference management system, which is Mendeley. Otherwise, you can employ someone who can do the referencing work for you. Uh, I told you about book. Uh, Prachi, please move to the next slide. I have told it about this, that they have uh, decreased the number of comma. Uh, come to the next one, magazine, I will be telling. A book edited is very simple. A bibliography, what you have to do, the, the, the title will come first and then the name will come. And there is no other change in the bibliography. Uh, web material, they have uh, come to the web material. I, I, I'm, let me explain you. Uh, in the web form, you can see that they have just decreased the in the URL, uh, the time zone and everything. And they have just decreased saying it that you just paste the URL and say accessed the date only, nothing more than that. So you can see that there is a consistency, clarity, conciseness. So concision, conciseness is the most important aspect of Ascola in the fourth edition. And they have decreased the number of comma and dots. That is the most important thing compared to the earlier versions of the Ascola. In the downloaded articles, I told you that they are maintaining only the dates. Now time is not required at all. And there is a very slight change in footnote and the bibliography. Come to the next one, cases. In case you can see that there is no dot in B, earlier there was no dot also. And earlier there was a tricky issue that B was not italic. So the defendant and plaintiff name was italic, but the versus was non-italic. Now they have simplified it and B has been made italic itself because in one go you can select the whole and you can make it italic. So you, you can see that they are doing all those necessary changes, which is decreasing your amount of time invested in referencing. And you can see in the citation of citator or the guide or the referencer, they are not using any comma. Okay, so they have decreased the work which is done in the cases because cases is, are cited in the work most. Then comes a very important thing, which I need to tell you about article. Come to the next one, how to cite an article. You can see that earlier there was double inverted comma, now this is one single inverted comma. So you can see that earlier version and new version has a C change. Your work is decreased. Earlier the citator or the referencer or the reporter was italic. Now it is non-italic. So they have simplified it. And this simplicity is the USP of the Ascola book. So Ascola book has made the whole citation very simple and handy. Only important thing that I must tell you, which Ascola and the Blue Book both quote equally, that there are certain personal literatures available with you. Maybe you have a WhatsApp message, you have an email, personal email, or maybe you have a chat. So if you want to quote a particular chat or you have a material in the form of CD, then in that particular situation, what should you do? That you must write the whole reference in the footnote and you can give a brief introduction there that the material is available with the author. So anybody who so ever wants to confirm that material is authentic or not, 
will approach you on your personal details or on your personal credentials so this is one thing very important that if there are personal materials to be quoted then ascola as well as blue book both are saying that you have to give a glimpse of that in the reference so you can see that ascola and blue book both are more and more simplified in newer versions now come to the next page and next slides i have explained it all come to the next one come to the blue book now next one yeah blue book a uh, blue book is very technical very technical uh, and blue book has three basic segments i know it is not very economical to buy a blue book but as i told you single non commercial use is valid and you can download a copy from any website from where you can find out a blue book i think 19th edition is available on the google so if you can just download it you will be easily finding it out how the blue book works so blue book has three sections there are blue book are blue pages then there are rules and then there are tables in blue pages there are explanation about what are the particular contents which are quoted while quoting a particular work then rules are there who are given the parenthesis or the larger explanation of a particular work to be quoted in a particular format and then tables are basically exactly giving you a demo how you have to quote blue book is available in soft copy as well as in hard copy so if you are availing the online services of blue book whatever contents are required to be filled in you have to fill in and then an outcome will be displayed on your web page you can copy it from there and you can put it in your work right from the web version which is available on the blue book and in the hard copy which you have a spiral bound work therein you have to find it out how a particular work has to be quoted because references are very different depending upon the jurisdictions and locations you are talking about and blue book becomes very important for those persons who want to practice in us because there are 50 states and in different states they have different types of citation methods which are basically explained in their tables so you can see here that blue book is very technical you just see the constitution how they are quoting the constitution article is very different then sections they are taking the greek alphabet sections sign which is very difficult to find out only in the world so you can see that they are using a lot of dots they are using a lot of capital in the case you can see how they are using the citation or citator which is very difficult and then they are putting it up all in tables so citing in blue book compared to ascola is a very complex process come to the next slide so i have given you certain information which are running in the first few pages of blue book three four pages are there to explain a newcomer or beginner who is just beginning the work and you can see and if you make a comparison with the ascola then you can see that the book here cited in all capital okay and if you compare to the ascola then ascola is quoting the author name as non italic the book name as italic and then publication house and the year only but here you have to type it 
in the particular work and then you have to capitalize it. So compared to Ascola, the blue book is very complex. Moving on, come to the next slide. It is self-explained as I told you that if you are taking the material from the internet, then you need not to give the uh, particular date in the newer version, it is explained there that you need not to give the dates. You just put up the URL only. But right now, if you see that in the blue book, you can find a mention of the date as well as the time. So compared to Ascola, the date is required as well as time is required here also. Okay, come to the next one. I told you that there are three sections of blue book. The first section is uh, in the blue pages, which are running in certain pages. They explain you how to cite, what are the contents required in a particular citation. Like if you have to cite a case, what are those contents required in a citation? They, they are explained in blue pages, why they are required. That is also explained. Then there are 21 rules explained in the blue book and then tables given based upon those rules. So whatever tables are given, those tables are based upon the rules which are explained in the blue book. Come to the next slide. Next slide. So if you are coming to the slides, then blue pages are just telling you how and what are those signals and contents which you have to mention in cases, in institutes, in constitutions, in litigation documents, in books. So they are explaining in each and every part because see, I'm, I'm explaining why these things are there. If you are reading any material or reference, when the idea of secularism came into being, I was really amazed to see that most of the times we associate Jean Bodin or Boda to the idea of sovereignty. But Jean Bodin or Boda was very much associated with the idea of secularism. That I got to know at a very later stage of my reading and writing. And this kind of reading you get to know in once you read Boden Himmer and there you read in the Lloyd or you read maybe William Friedman and then you get to see certain other literature which are available or certain articles which are quoted. Then that article you find out maybe on JSTOR. Like, like I'm giving you an example. We have an authority in the Northern region called Dr. Aryu Singh, who was the founder, Dean of Law School, LU. And he has been a professor of law in BHU also. And he wrote a work that is the one work on Lorimer jurisprudence of Lorimer. Lorimer was a naturalist. So I was assigned this task that you find out that literature, his article written by Dr. Aryu Singh, who was a Harvard scholar. He was a student of Dean Roscoe Pound. So my university assigned me a task that you find out, assist you download the literature. I just searched out my library and I got to know that he has written something on Lorimer. Then I read a literature which was basically about natural law and therein I found some reference of Lorimer. And then from that reference, I found out that Aryu Singh has written just one piece of article that is jurisprudence of Lorimer. So once you have to find out a particular book or literature, then maybe publication house, publication year, publication place, maybe a replica published in other jurisdictions become very important. And if you have one clue, one clue, like you have date of judgment, you have judges name, you have the council name, you have the party name, then it is really easy to face out. I have never backed up on any reporter. I have always backed up on judges. And when I met uh, uh, Dr. Umesh Chandra, who was the librarian of Supreme Court library, I was amazed and I congratulated him. that judges is the most important database which we are sufficed with. And you just ask me any judgment which have been produced by any constitutional court, we can easily fish out from judice. So blue book is just maintaining in blue pages why those parentheses are, why those details are required in 
a referencing methodology because references makes academic integrity or academic depth or academic diving very easy so you can find out more and more literatures and once google is there because google in, is in, into the digitization process and the whole harvard law library has been digitized by google and then there are works which are easily available in the dark net also and from dark net you can download any literature for single non commercial use which will not uh, bring any ip litigation upon you so you can just uh, download all those marvels of law literatures from those dark net as well which makes your work very easy and you can create a whole lot of library for a uh, longer or, or a very deeper kind of research which you are engaging to so this blue book in blue pages is explaining only that that once you are quoting something from journal from a uh, magazine or newspaper articles what are the contents which are required to be put in come to the next one prachi i have explained that there are rules there are blue pages and then there are tables come to the tables one or the rules one yeah tables one so as i told you that in rules and tables the difference is that in blue pages they are just asking you what is to be put in rules they are explaining why this is to be put and in tables how this is to be put that is explained so if you see the blue book don't get confused it's a bound spiral bound document running into pages but it is very simple what is to be quoted is given in blue pages why it is to be quoted it is given in rules and how it is to be quoted is given in tables so beginners must go for the tables and mid level researcher must go to the rules and those who are associated with the research methodology work they must go to the blue pages to understand the parenthesis or the detailing procedure in a citation methodology guide now coming to the uh last part of my whole exercise you can see here uh, in the last part format i have explained here like about india they are explaining what kind of country india is and how reporting is done how a case has to be cited they are explaining in the rules and how it will be shown they are demonstrating in the table so it is very simply i have explained the blue book before you that what is the blue pages what are the rules and how table is demonstrating the referencing methodology to you apart from this referencing i will recommend one book to you john creswell the john creswell book is very good about legal research or research methodology it is about qualitative and quantitative research in john creswell you can understand what is the importance of bibliography and referencing so in short this is all from my side and now i am opening the session for question answer if you have any question answer session or you want to ask any question you can ask from me uh, thank you so much sir for such an informative session uh, moving on to the question answer round so first question is from miss amina uh, which body has a paramount authority to standardize citation guidelines see this this question is quite tricky as i told you that blue book has self proclaimed gold standard and there is a citation war going on between the chicago school and the harvard school which is backing up on the blue book because blue book is being published from the harvard law school so these schools are fighting along the maroon book and blue book fight is going on and in that fight involved this awld also american writers american legal writings directors association so these people are saying that they have their own set of standards there is no standardizing uh, agency involved into it 
and if you see indians indians mostly these days are copying the ascola style and ili style ili blue book has been there for very long but most of the times we have also found that academic institutions do have their own blue books so there is no single agency in the world providing for standard procedures but as i told you that blue book explains the parenthesis what are the required content of a citation so relying upon that and this is the most unique and ancient guide which we are surprised with 1921 it is being published from so you can say and see that blue book becomes the most authentic in that terms that what are the minimum contents required in citing a particular reference or material thank you so much sir uh, so next question is from mr jk panda uh, what is the difference between end note and bibliography see uh, those who are into the writing they might have seen that footnote and end note both is there once you are using footnote then publication will require more number of pages and if you are going into hard copies print then cast up publication will go high depending upon what you are sorting in terms of technicality of pages like if you are taking gsm page you are taking rd pages you are taking suppose bond pages because bond pages are yellow in color and the bond pages the more ancient it will become the more antique it will become it will look more beautiful rd pages will remain white even after 400 years but rd pages are really very uh, heavy because they will be 100 gsm papers so it depends upon the quality of paper cast up publication will go very high most of the people who want to save on the cast up publication they will be asking you to convert footnote into end notes end notes are given at the end of the article and footnotes are given at the foot of the page itself so footnotes or end notes are quite distinct and they reduce the cost of publication depending upon what paper you are choosing for publication what type of paper what is the style of printing you are taking like you are going for suppose a column based printing it will also reduce the number of pages so these are chosen on the basis of the kind of publication format or style you are choosing thank you sir the next question is from ms kavya why blue book citation is accepted despite its complexity yes uh, see i i told you that blue book basically uh, the, the america is the most sought after legal educational institutions they are there like uh, anybody wants to go to the berkeley anybody wants to go to the california anybody wants to go to the harvard these are the law schools michigan law school is there also uh, pennsylvania duke all these law schools are very prominent law schools and apart from chicago law school all law schools are quoting only blue book so any person who is a student here at one point of time if he suppose he want to go on sabbatical because there are sabbaticals also positions which are open only for a month and you are going there for a study maybe for a month only then you have to show your publications you might have to write a statement of purpose you might have to make available certain writings which you have submitted to american publication houses so there harvard blue book only is the option available to you and right now the persons like me and prachi will be struggling because of the care publications and in care publications most of the publication houses are americans in those american publication houses there is no choice but to go by the blue book so the academic writing is very much dominated by the blue book only because of the care publication which we are required to publish in and the students which will be opting the american law schools for any reason i'm telling you you are going for a short stint or a full law program then publications are must and publications in american jurisdiction is must that's why this is more sought after and as i told you this is very systematic ascola is a very brief guide but blue book is a very detailed guide it runs into pages 
hundreds of pages all explanations are there that's why the blue book becomes very authentic and very sought after thank you so much sir for such an informative session and for answering all the questions patiently uh, now i would like to invite mrs monica karola the catering coordinator of ifai law school dehradun to uh, for the vote of thanks ma uh yeah prachi thank you you can hear me yes ma'am oh, i am extremely thankful to the speaker today dr ashish who has made a lot of work easier for researchers because now they have got uh, detailed information about why plagiarism and how it should be prevented and the blue book uh, citation method the ospo citation method dr ashish has very wonderfully given the brief uh, including the copyright issues and the other issues that are there we are thankful to him for having taken this session and i'm sure it will be very useful for all the participants in this virtual lecture we thank you dr ashish once again from on behalf of ikfai university dehradun i thank you and would love to welcome you whenever you are available in dehradun thank you very much for being with us on this lecture thank you ma'am thanks a lot thank you thank, thank you prachi thank, thank you. so uh, we would like to close this lecture prachi yes ma'am thank you okay. ma'am thank you sir.